friends, they're making naans today. And uh, before we get to our recipe, I just wanted to speak with you about uh, something very important. So as you know, the COVID-19 and the pandemic that is going around and we have to be very careful. So one of the things that you can do is to keep all your surfaces clean. And what I did is instead of buying tons and tons of uh, wet pipes, what you can do is a very, you know, you can pick this one up uh, from any hardware store for a couple of bucks. Uh, the container and then you can take a surface cleaner uh, solution that are that is available one part surface cleaner solution three parts water and you can just go around and turn this into a wet pipe make sure all your surfaces are very very clean anything any equipment that you're using is also very clean so that is just i wanted to get out of the way before we uh, start with the recipe uh, when we're preparing food for others it's our responsibility to make sure that all the surfaces that we use and all the equipment that we use is absolutely clean one more thing that i want to talk about is about using uh, the yeast so yesterday i used yeast as is some people ask me that uh, what about uh, proofing the yeast and making sure it's all good so all you need to do is you need to take some really warm water around 110 fahrenheit uh, in temperature put your yeast into it and uh, if uh, within 10 minutes it doubles in size your yeast is good. So that's what I've done and I'll be using that for our recipe today. So let's start measuring our flour. So I'll just uh, zero out my scale and start adding my flour. The recipe it requires somewhere around 450 to 500 grams of flour. And it makes eight to ten naans, and uh, we'll, I will try and stick to four hundred and fifty grams. But sometimes, when you are making the dough and you see there is too much water in there, uh, you may want to add a little bit more flour. So that extra fifty grams cushion uh, comes uh, in in handy. So as you can see, I'm exactly at four hundred and fifty grams here. So for the ingredients, as I mentioned to you, I have 450 grams flour. I have uh, 10 grams yeast doubled in size in hot water. As you can see, it has a, a significantly increased in size. I have 50 grams of butter. Uh, you can use any other cooking fat if you want. I'm using butter, 50 grams of it. I have melted that so it uh, uh, you know accompanies properly with the flour. And then I have uh, five grams of sugar, very little sugar we need. Uh, we'll put a little bit of sugar while we were proofing our um, yeast as well. You put a few grams of sugar just for the yeast. And then we have 10 grams of salt. We'll add all the ingredients and we'll start making our dough. So as you can see, all ingredients are incorporated and put into the bowl. I have mixed them together so they are homogenized. And now I will start adding my water. So I have very warm water. Again, okay, around 100 Fahrenheit. Um, in, in temperature and I'll start the dough. As you can see it's kind of, kind of gluten has uh, fully developed and this is the kind of consistency we are looking for. So we ran it for a couple of minutes for uh, on low speed and for another couple of minutes on high speed. I had to use some extra flour because uh, I initially put a little too much water, but uh, that's the, that's why you keep that extra flour, the 50 gram extra cushion you have. So now our dough is pretty much ready and we will take it out and put it into, uh, put it in for, you know, in a place where we can um, let it rise. And we're looking for it uh, double in size. So as you can see, this is how much dough we have. It looks pretty good. So we'll stick it into the uh, uh, turned off microwave just so it maintains its heat. It was um, uh, needed in, it was actually mixed in very warm water. So it should retain that heat and use that heat to um, uh, continue to rise. As you can see, the dough has doubled in size. So we'll just uh, apply a little bit of flour and let our dough come out of the bowl nice and easy that is awesome 
and what we're looking to do is to roll it and try and make dough balls out of it. Apply a little bit more dry flour, just to do a sprinkling, so it's manageable. Just going to roll it a little bit. Gently, and then start rolling it into a... What I like to do is, and there are many ways of doing it, what I would like to do is to roll it into a long um, loaf and then cut it into multiple uh, dough balls. So as you can see I have kind of rolled it into a long um, loaf and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this dough cutter to just Cut it into two pieces and then eat pieces into roughly four equal parts. That will be eight nans. It, it's just a rough way of cutting your dough into equal size dough balls. And I'll be using each one of them to roll and convert into our dough balls. The way to roll it into a ball, very nice trick. You can just, if you can see my thumb and uh, pinky finger, they're just forcing it into, from the bottom into a nice rolled dough ball. So once it is done roughly, uh, you can just make one and put it here, let it rise, it will continue to rise. Your yeast is still working. And you just go on, apply some dry flour, just so it doesn't stick to your hands and then just using your pinky finger and thumb you just turn it into a nice little dough ball now there is a little bit of a size difference but you know i'm just making it home so i'm not going to worry about that too much but if you're making it for guests or if you're making you know where presentation is important you may want to just make sure that you take out the dough from one piece and put it into another one and kind of make them equal I'm just going to do a rough job because as I said they will continue to rise. As you can see all my dough balls are ready and I have taken just one of them and I'm going to convert that into a nice uh, uh, non shape. So I'll use my rolling pin um, and kind of just gently roll it. I will use dry flour if it is sticking to the, so it doesn't stick to my board. As you can see all the, all the dry flour just helps to roll it into shape properly you can still see that um, uh, there are some bubbles if you don't like that you, you can uh, you can try and knead those bubbles out but you know they're going to continue to come as your yeast continues to work even after you roll it into a nice non shape you will still see that they will continue to rise and some people do that they let they roll it out and leave it to rise again uh, just to get that extra fluffy texture into a non so it depends on you so we have two choices we can i have uh, my oven on preheating and as soon as i have um, rolled one non out i will put it into the oven and uh, my second choice would be to uh, roll all my nuns so my oven is preheated to 250 celsius or 480 fahrenheit and it's fully preheated so i'm just gonna put it in and close it uh, timer doesn't matter, you can put any timer, you will be uh, putting your naan one at a time or two at a time or three at a time uh, or if you have two, you can put two rack, racks, I just want to show it clearly, so I just put one for now and we will just leave it there, usually it takes four to five minutes for it to be ready. So as you can see, it's been cooking for almost five minutes and our beautiful naan, as you can see, golden naan is ready, a great touch you can do, a great garnish, you can actually just uh, add a little bit of butter on it um, this is just a simple naan you can add multiple garnishes you can add uh, garlic to it that's a traditional one you can add onions you can add uh, coriander 
you can add multiple things but this is beautiful golden crispy soft from the inside crispy on the outside naan uh, and i will just make the rest of them and then uh, we'll come back they're ballooning up so nicely that's the beauty of a perfect naan So here you can see we have our dough ball as you can see they continue to rise so you just keep working with them here my naan is ready to go in the oven here i have separate you have to keep the raw flour separate from the cooked ones that's very important for health and these naan they are coming out and i'm just putting them uh, putting butter on them as you can see the next naan is coming out it's almost ready i'm just waiting for it to finish off so you can see it it will probably take me around 25 to 30 minutes to get around uh, uh, eight naans which is not bad if you are cooking at home and you are safe and you are uh, you are eating something without preservatives and eating something which you exactly know what the ingredients have been in there so i'm just going to take this one out and put the new one in i'll give it probably another five seconds before it's ready to come out and the next one is ready to go in Looks pretty good to me. We we'll just take this out, put it in here. You have to be careful not to get steam on your hands. And I'll pull this out a little bit, slightly, just to just enough. So it's not dangerous, and I can put my next knot in. You see, I just use my hands to stretch it out a little bit further, and then I use my uh, tongs to get that back in. So next one in. This will get a little bit of uh, butter treatment. As you can see, and it will be ready, and I will make the next one ready to go into the oven. So as you can see, my eight naans are ready. They are pretty much roughly the same size, although I was not really worrying too much about the size. I was just going by the by the you know uh, by the feel of it. So you can see, uh, you can cut them into half or quarters if you prefer. Uh, they actually are, are a pretty versatile uh, use. You can uh, you can eat them just like that with a curry or something. You can they they were all sloughing up. So what you can do is you can actually open one up, cut one up, and fill it with something else like pita bread. So uh, you know I'm just gonna go and quickly cut them with my bread knife here, and I'm gonna show you the beautiful pockets inside the naan. So you can see how. The pockets have developed you can actually see that uh, you can you can fill it with the ingredients and they look beautiful friends thank you very much for joining us today i encourage you to like subscribe and comment and let us know how we can make it simpler and better thank you